run the show. Hey, what's up, Emerald Coast? We are live. We've got audio. Uh, it's Friday. It's Friday. And the weather is looking good. Yep. And uh, I'm yep. Chris Seaman. This is R this is RJ, not Jake Mitchell. This is RJ Murdoch. Oh, I didn't update that's that. That's my tech guy. We always look for something every day, every show, just so you know. But uh, that's okay. That that's is still a, RJ. It's, it's been that long since we did it. Although had Jake shaved his face, he <laughs> could look like you, RJ. Very much. There we go. Yeah, there now we go. Now we know who each other is. Nah, nah. What's up, Emerald Coast? It's Friday. And uh, yeah, we got some, uh, we've got a great little show today. We got some yeah. great topics Finally, in the paper, they saved it for Friday. Right. So some great things to talk about. But we've got a busy man to do the show today, RJ. We so, do. Uh, and as a matter of fact, he was actually featured. Oh, man, why do I keep doing that? In the paper the, the other party. day. See, when you bring in a captain on board, you just sit back I and let the sit captain back. Do you, run the show. Do you remember this? Yes. Over uh, That was in the paper a couple of days there ago. Look at that. I was like, what the heck is that? And how far offshore, offshore were they for that? And then I found out. That wasn't the outshore at all. Well, actually, we're going to find out more information yeah, don't about give that. His spot. He's but good let's bring on because he's a really busy guy. He's basically in between charters right now. He's got like people like, hey, waiting to go. Finish, get off your phone so you can take us out there. But uh, we're going to promote him a little bit here. So, yeah. hey, Josh. So, let's bring, Josh on, let's bring in Josh. Hey, Captain Josh Chuck Calhoun. Welcome to the oh, What's Up Emerald Coast. Glad you came on today. You're in the middle of two charters for Friday. That's a good sign. So, how's, uh, how's fishing this morning? Oh, it was pretty good. Had a good, pretty good bite on mangrove snappers and redfish. Only had one guy, so it was pretty easy. Oh, that makes a pretty easy charter. So, what are you looking to do? Similar uh, charter this afternoon? Uh, we got a bunch of kids the rest of the day, so we're just gonna go out, have some fun, try to catch anything we can. Now, you're on the uh, Destin Inshore uh, Guides. Is, is that correct? That's the company you fish with. Yes. Sweet. So, uh, let me ask you. Uh, were you kind of, I guess, was the shutdown from the pandemic, uh, was that also conveniently timed that we were waiting for the season to really kick off anyway? Or did that really do a lot of, hold you back from a lot of your charters? How did that really affect you, let's say, two months ago? Oh, uh, we, it hurt us bad. I mean, we, that's the beginning of our season. That's one of our two busy times is spring break and summer. And we got one week of spring break and, and it shut down, so. Um, it hurt us big time for the spring. Yeah. yeah. Was it as much? Was it as much the rules about social distancing, or just your clients that normally come to town weren't clients? Here? We we had we had people lined up if they could find a place to stay or come down, they would have came and fished. But so everything was, shut down. So it was more of an economic an, an economic impact. Yeah. Um, and that makes sense. Well, I'm glad you're out there fishing now. So making up for lost time, we don't want to hold you up too much. But let's talk about. What RJ got so excited to see, I know he saw the headline, he saw a Volkswagen Beetle coming up from the bottom of the water. And uh, give us a little bit about that experience catching that Goliath grouper. That always seems to catch the paper's headlines and gets a photograph. So congratulations on that. I mean, look um, at the size of that thing. It, it looks like in the photo he went down and spearfished it. Is that is that, is that the plan? <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's just hard to judge how big they are in pictures. Um, I've caught two before and the picture is just, you can't really tell how big they are. I was really hoping um, you had a video of it to work with. That would have been awesome. <laughs> yeah, they're just so thick that you can't really tell how big they really are unless you got something next to them or. Sure. So, so you're sitting on the side of the It was pretty again. tired. We were trying to revive him. So I was like, hey, let me jump in real quick. Take a picture. There you go. That makes sense. Well, good job on that. That certainly made it. So how yeah. big was he? Probably pushing 400 pounds there you wow go. so where Bad was this actually this. caught at this is inshore this is not we're, offshore right where no, was we're just a couple miles off we're um, okay we're actually having a pretty tough day that morning uh we're having trouble catching bait and uh i had one of my best clients on the boat we do a lot of catch and release and i was trying to catch big fish with them and uh we couldn't really find bait and then first four or five fish we hooked for his daughter they 
we missed the bites and we finally got it that was the first fish we hooked all day and uh halfway up the guy ate by something ended up being that grouper but that was the only fish we caught it was done uh the customers were tired after that and we came home so it was a one fish trip <laughs> Yeah, I so bet. so um so the fish. I mean the boat the boat you're in. You said is, is how large is twenty four foot. Twenty four foot. <laughs> so you can't really go far out, but you're doing both inshore and just close to shore. Uh, we're a state licensed boat, so we have to stay within nine miles in general. But um, on calm days, you can go far out on a small boat. You just gotta pick your days. But that day was a pretty nice day. Uh, we had a small window before the wind picked up and. The guy that I actually took out, he always gets seasick, so tells you how calm it was. <laughs> Fair enough. Hey, Josh, you said you've caught two of those Goliath groupers before. How long have you been fishing in the area? I was born and raised here, so I've fished my whole life. I started gotta, deckhand when I started love that paying. answer. Got to love that answer, man. I'm glad to hear that. So uh, so you've seen uh, – so that's uh, that's just impressive that you've caught three of those Goliath groupers. What uh, As the season goes on – and we get back to some normalcy. What is your favorite charter to go out for right now? What are you looking forward to the most? Uh, redfish. We, I like targeting the big, the big bull reds. Gotcha, gotcha. So uh, just going to the, down the road here as we promote uh, Dustin Inshore Guides and Josh Calhoun. RJ is a big fish fan, so the more you trade us out with a fillet or two now and then, I mean, the more we promote your phone number. Have, have, have you checked? <laughs> Have you checked out some of these photos from these? I mean, oh, this is a lot of I did. I looked stuff. online. He does a great job. That's for sure. You know, and some of these, I can't believe the size of them that they were actually inshore. So now, but now that I've now that you mentioned that you sometimes go just slightly offshore, then that makes a lot of sense. But it looks like the, a lot of these, the kids look like they're having the most fun. Absolutely, that's what it's all about. Fishing <laughs> is a minute, great family that, event. That, that's a shark over there. That is a shark. So you that's you pulled in a few sharks. Now, are you doing those inshore or offshore? <laughs> Yeah, oh, right, there. right along the, the beach, beach. really. Those, yeah. During the summer months, those black tips and spinner sharks are real plentiful along the coastline. So, right uh, on the beach, right uh, outside the sandbar. Yeah. Yeah. So, so we'll we'll go out and side cast some or anchor up if they're real thick. We'll just anchor up and um, throw some big dead baits out. So, Josh, I'll ask you one more question. As uh, it's in the paper, because we'll we'll let you go get get back to work. That's the most important thing. And thank you for being here today. Yeah. But uh, the one of the headlines in the paper and the conversation is, you know, they were supposed to have the uh, pass dredged out uh, before the season started, and weather uh, broke the dredge, from what I understand, and they finally got it back. How is that? Uh, how's that appear from? Give us a bird's eye view right now. What you what you think about the pass and what's happening out there? Uh, the weather's the weather's making it tough on them. Um, it has to be real pretty weather, and over the past few weeks, we've had a lot of rough days. Um, yeah. So I think that's probably what's taking them long so long to get it finished up. They were starting to work on it, and then we got that storm that came through, so they had to pull all their stuff out. Gotcha. It looks like yeah. they're getting geared back up to get back in it. But it's a good thing they at least got it done before, or at least some of it done before the storm. From what you were right. telling me, that it made it much easier for you guys. It would have been hard for you guys to get in and out of the um, the harbor there with, if they had not done what they. Yeah, had it definitely done. makes it tougher. Yeah, with a, so, with shallow water and waves. Yeah, so shallow water creates uh, creates a, the, the the waves break. You were telling us that on the smaller boats. It seemed to me they interviewed all the captains on big boats who were worried about the bot hitting the bottom. But your concern is really about the waves breaking as you're going in and out of the pass. Is that correct? That's for both the big and the, even the big boats. I mean, yeah. I've been I've been on a big boat on deck hand before and had a wave crash over the side. So it's definitely a, a dangerous pass to go through if you're not yeah. used to it. Okay, so Fair enough. yeah. So one last thing is like uh, if somebody's new to the area or somebody's visiting the area and they're thinking about going fishing, um, is it better to do the inshore or offshore? Uh, what, in your opinion, um, depends on the season. Depends on the season, I guess, right? What, what can you tell us about it's all, advice it's, for it's a tourist? Two different. It's two different fisheries, so um, depends on if you like getting. If, it, if you get seasick, you want to go in the bay. If you don't get seasick, you want to try to catch a bigger fish. Fair you want to go in the Gulf, but it's two different fisheries. Uh, we're catching redfish, speckled trout, mangrove snappers, uh, black drum in the bay, and then in the Gulf, you're going to be targeting like. Amberjacks, red snappers, king mackerels. And Goliath groupers every once and in a while. And occasional Goliath grouper. That's <laughs> outstanding. Well, Josh, thank you for being here on the show. And uh, 
giving us our first ever fishing report, and uh, we appreciate that greatly. And it looks like the timing was just right. <laughs> so, so I guess he's got to get to work. So thank you, Josh, for Thanks, being Josh. here. Thanks, Josh. RJ, did you do much fishing? Um, I used to do a lot when I was a kid, but not. Okay. I, I, I've done one or two. Yeah. So I worked on a, I worked on a headboat when I was a kid. I when I was a teenager in Ocean City, Maryland, and that pass is not unlike uh, our pass, but it's actually a little rougher mm -hmm. uh, because this, the the geography of it is very similar, except it's going out into the Atlantic Ocean. Mm -hmm. So the swells coming off the Gulf off the ocean are are consistently larger than what happens in the Gulf. The yeah. Gulf can be very flat one days, but when it gets choppy here, it gets choppy. and the base and the sandbar, they don't have as much of the issue of the sandbar issue in the East Coast and their passes as we do, because it's, because it's flatter, sandbars form. Well, and, and my only boating experience is here on the Emerald Coast. Fair enough. Well, uh, I worked yeah. on a boat, so when he talked about mating on a boat, I worked on a boat for two summers on a head boat, and uh, that was one of my, when I look back in the hospitality industry, combined with fishing, I started out with my dad a lot when I was a kid, and uh, I ended up working on a boat 7 a.m. every morning. So picture one of the new Florida girl where you take out 60 people bottom fishing. Right. That's almost exactly the same. In fact, the boat I worked on was built in Freeport, Florida. Hmm. And, uh, you know, several decades ago. And um, it's quite an experience going out that pass. You can see out in the Atlantic Ocean, it might be four or five foot swells, normal day in the Atlantic Ocean. But going through the pass in Ocean City, it could easily be nine, 10 foot swells because it's coming into shallower water with the combined, the jetty on each side. Right. So you combine that with a sandbar and I can see where Josh on a 24 foot boat gets tossed around a little bit. Like and and most people don't realize at our jetties that that point right there between the Gulf and the, the pass itself. Those waters can get That's what I'm really talking about, right, right where, where you're reaching, where the, where the gulf, open water of the Gulf is reaching the, particularly when it's an outgoing tide, mm -hmm. and you have that outgoing tide hitting the water that's, uh, the waves that are coming in, you get some of that turbulence in there that is uh, quite a challenge for captains. You know, and, you know we, have the, we have the largest fishing fleet in all of Florida here mm -hmm. in Destin, and we have some fantastic captains that are well-versed in dealing with it. So, um, and then occasionally they go out and catch a Goliath grouper. That's pretty daggone cool. And it know? used to be with the uh, the Emerald Coast Poker Run, that, that was like the thing that people with the boats wanted to be photographed, yeah. video. But yeah, I was I, I was always on that helicopter. Yeah, and that know, one I, boat yeah, I remember flew. That, but we talked about that. I remember uh, we, we talked about that. I was ejected actually, some passengers. Well, yeah. I, I was a president of charity that time, RJ, when they wanted to always get out into that pass because they wanted to catch air. Mm -hmm. So they were actually using those rollers to catch air with their boats. And, you know, that's great. That's a big ego. They're, they're taking those, some of those boats out there and catching air and they get their props out of the water. And those guys love you're that. Not ex if you're, a lot of them are not experienced. Well, what happens is you get some that aren't, ex even the most experienced captains. Yeah. All of a sudden you can get an unexpected angle to a wave and wind. Those are, you know, those are on God's plan. Those aren't on, you can't just line that up and say like evil can evil, we're jumping a ramp. That's more of a, you know, the, the nature's factor. So you could get into the air and all of a sudden a wind gust can come from the side and that boat can flip in a, in a heartbeat. Yeah. And, and I remember that one year we were even on the back bay. And there's no seatbelts. Yeah, well, there are seatbelts. Well, yeah, but they're not hanging on. Those guys were not. Those guys, no, no. they're strapped in. No, they're mostly strapped in. But even those, when those boats impact, they can release passengers. It happens. And yeah. It's unfortunate. It is. That's not what we want to promote here is the no, powerboat no. so, I mean, guys going out the pass and that, to that has, their egos. That was That's a, not what it's about. That was a decade ago. They no longer do that anymore. Yeah, well, they don't. They still do do it, but they just don't do it here. This the event. We don't promote it because we had to really discourage that. The sheriff's department discouraged that because we're not really stationed to uh, have first responders for that. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's enough accident. I think they've also figured it out. If you're a boater like of, of a powerboat, um, they've figured out that that's not something you really need to be doing. Because I, I remember what, in the last few years, some big players in the uh, poker run community, um, they lost some some big names, uh, some people with some unfortunate accidents. And, uh, and but it was, you know, even on regular flat water on the bay uh, in areas along the around the Gulf Coast, down in Key West, um, on lakes, you can have places where the wind, where those boats get up to 130, 180 miles an hour for a recreational boat. 
when you get some wind, those things take off like a like a wing on a plane. Yeah. And um, that's what they're designed to do to, to get on top of the water. And, and some guys are doing that with wave runners out there now. So. Okay, well, not quite that fast, RJ. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> and they're designed more to jump, and they're more they are. maneuverable, and you don't have usually extra passengers. Yeah. But well, speaking of wave runners, if you guys want to do a day trip to Panama City Beach, they've got a torn a a wave runner racing going oh. on here yeah. Saturday and Sunday. Oh, I thought you meant to go to Panama City by wave runner. Hell no. No. <laughs> Not doing that. But uh, it's the coolest thing. One is of that my, Mikey doing that? One of my streaming guys is, uh, is Mikey he, he covers that. that. I'm not sure about Mikey. If Mikey, Mikey Young is, uh, he's very known. For but the, I will be there tomorrow morning. He's I'm watched be our show because he's heckled me a couple times <laughs> offline. And uh, so that's the case. I'm going to start doing the same. But speaking of the water, RJ, let's get back to the paper. Yeah. Because I'm excited that uh, right here, you got your picture. Yeah, let me pull that up. This Go is ahead. a call to action from our show. Um, this is important because if the fishing is important to you, um, access to go out there and be an idiot in a powerboat, do whatever you want to call it. If you want to be an idiot on a jet ski or just enjoy it as a responsible boater, I should say. But right there, the fight isn't over. And that makes me feel a little good. Right. And but better that governor or ex-governor. Let US, them know what the, uh, the background is on that. I'm because getting, I'm getting there. Yeah. And it makes me feel good that ex-governor Scott, who took up this fight uh, when he was the governor, that is they go to there's there's industry pushes to explore the sands off of the gulf off the off the florida beaches for oil for oil and natural gas and you know there's a lot of debate you know the further you get over to the mississippi beds you know that's where the oil is in louisiana and texas and as we come over to our sugar white sands there's a, there's a lot of argument that there's there's some down deep is it worth getting to of course if we all know at least when the sound of my physical voice here in the studio, we all know the BP oil spill. And um, that was a big deal. And um, But Governor Scott took up the fight uh, back during that time. Even after BP, they were still fighting to drill off our coast. Right, and that was 2010. Correct. So this is, uh, they've had a moratorium on any rigs being put, any exploration of yes. rigs being put out outside on the Gulf shores of Florida. Correct until 2022 correct so we're now, coming a couple up on issues that there, and, and our president trump is an advocate according to his words uh an advocate for opening that exploring up so uh, you know I, I without getting into it about the president whether he really means it or understands it or if he's just repeating people in the industry that he's friends with um i'll say personally that i when i had the privilege of uh going up there and lobbying thank you matt gates for uh, sending me up there and i went up with my buddy bobby neighbors who at the time was a city councilman and a business owner in the area and we lobbied some senators as the oil spill was happening which was i which was weirdly ironic timing wise well we had to go up there and fight to protect our shores mm -hmm. And um, there's two things. That and I just validated it. Let me give, point out to our viewers something they might not know. Um, because everybody thinks about the potential disaster of an oil rig disaster, like we experienced with BP, and our beaches are threatened by uh, oil spill. But what we don't realize is one of the greatest natural resources we have for our United States Air Force yeah. and, and our military training. And I was about to bring that up. the natural range that is the Gulf Coast. Now we know that Eglin has got the land range. It's one of the largest military bases in the free world. In fact, it is the largest military base in the free world uh, for the air to ground combat. But the air to air combat that happens, it happens out over the Gulf of Mexico. The F-22 out of Tyndall and the F-35 out of Eglin, as well as the 15s and 16s. And then the and Hornets out of well. Pensacola. Yeah. Well, and then the Hornets out of Pensacola, they go out and dogfight. Mm -hmm. in the air over the gulf um it's a safer area for the for the fighters and stuff they practice with drones out there they in fact practice against each other yes we also practice over in the desert uh over in vegas and such and then yes we test our missiles that we that we eglin air force base one of their biggest uh, missions is missile testing mm -hmm. and when they launch those missiles and they you know track what they're doing and get all their information they're it's, they're shooting them right over our heads yeah, uh, and launching out into the Gulf. So the last thing we want is some potential disaster. Right, because that would affect the mission of the Eglin Air That's Force what Base. That's what it's about. Basically, and, and that is basically what's drawing the, uh, fueling yeah. the economy here. Uh, so, I mean, it kind of a helps us win over besides that we don't want to see the offshore rigs on our shores. Like if you go to Biloxi, you'll see a rig out there. Or if you go to New Orleans, you might be see a rig out there. Uh, but, but you're not sitting on the beaches in New Orleans. 
That's the difference. So, well, okay, in Louisiana. Yeah, so when, when you come over to our Gulf pristine Shores, beaches uh, and our sugar, as we've talked about in this show, there's two big industries here. And, they, and it's the military and the sugar white sand. Mm -hmm. And the sugar white sand to me includes the, the beauty of the water, the sand itself, but the horizon. That little background right there on our screen, you know, picture an oil rig right there. So if you don't want an oil rig right there, I think we need to reach out and let some our, let our local politicians know that we're still in this fight. Um, I commend Governor, our ex-governor, current Senator Scott. I don't agree with him on much, particularly my friends that haven't gotten an unemployment check. But uh, in this case, I commend him for wanting to say the fight isn't over. We don't need the oil rigs out there. And I'm pretty sure the base commander of Eglin and the powers that trickle up all the way into the Pentagon yeah. have a lot to say about what happens off our shore. Um, in fact, I remember um, Representative Miller giving me a little dissertation about this saying the decision really falls up in the Pentagon uh, about what happens because that is a vital resource for us. So there you go. There's my yeah, box for the day. Yeah. All right. Well, not enough said. I think uh, we're kind of short on time. We I do, time? I we do, don't get to talk I, about... I do want to bring up, you know, our shameless plugs and okay. a couple of things. What are we Yeah, I want to eat. There's, there's always... Yeah. I got to eat. So what's so, the counter today? So, uh, well... Let's start off with our shameless plug. Of course, uh, if you're watching us live right now, you're watching us live on Emerald Coast TV's uh, Facebook page. Uh, but you can also be watching us live on YouTube, Roku, and Amazon Fire all at the same time. And we appreciate it if you subscribe or like any of those or add it to your, your Roku. Also, uh, we also do have a Facebook page that we uh, will be putting promotions on, taking polls on, as well as uh, we'll probably, someday we'll be live streaming it too. That's good. As well. So you talked about Seaside Heights yesterday? Yeah. That's my boy right there. Mr. Glenn is from that area. So which, which comment you know are we talking James about? James Glenn, right there. See, we're now becoming a national entity because uh, that's my comment. What does Glenn say? Let's go fishing. If, and, if that's my buddy, James Glenn, I might be wrong, but... Uh, I don't know. I can't tell by the photo, but I have a James Glenn from Seaside Heights. I wanted to tell you that yesterday. I did not know he that. He was my roommate in college. How about that? So, anyway. so it's funny. Actually, maybe I'm wrong. It might be the same, different James Glenn. We'll find out in a second. Well, you know, that's kind of funny because that leads us right into our uh, our, our next thing topic. We were talking about uh, Crab Island. Uh, yeah. Yesterday, yesterday was all about the Crab there you Island. Go. Whale tipped over in Seaside Park. There's your. I lost your screen for you there. But, uh, uh, that is my buddy up in New Jersey. Fellow pizza maker. Fellow pizza maker. Yeah, he thinks he makes a better pizza than me. We're going to have that little competition uh, one day in the near future. Oh, there we go. Uh, and I yeah. was trying to bring I up... I will say uh, this. He can cook, generally speaking, better than me because he fed me in college a lot. I wanted to see what the crab island was looking Packed. like over it's there. You know, you know, after our conversation with that and before, right before we went off the air, I didn't get a chance to put the comment on there, but uh, my mom was like, I want to go to crab island. Of course island. she does. <laughs> of course she does. Mom, I'll take you. If, if RJ won't, I'll take you. Yeah. So, um, so we're going to go ahead and uh, finish up the show here with what this national is what day you, is today? This is what the day I don't you've tell Chris about. at all about any of these. This is what we so forgot about while this pandemic thing. thing was going on. We forget that there was things called. There are so many things. There's always things, but nobody really knows what they are. But okay. nationaldaycalendar.com, you can find out all the history about some of these things. So let's go Look ahead and start off with. There oh, there, there's there's like always food. some food that in there. Like food, riblets. Oh, jerky. National Jerky Day. Done. National Jerky Day. Yeah. Now, I've Done. actually become quite a fan of it you lately did. because it's just something easy to carry around and, and ready on standby, especially for camera of, guys. Hey, since Ryan is calling into the show, uh, mm. I'm on the show, Ryan. Go get us some jerky because he's a big jerky fan. He's got <laughs> deer jerky like crazy, and I'm a big fan. So, so, you know, it takes a pound of jerky to get four ounces because it, 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 all the water well, is hydrated all those out of it. Let go, RJ. Go to the next one. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what the jokes you're talking about. Uh, it's all right. National Loving Day. Yeah, okay. Do you know what this is? <laughs> no, it's National Loving... No. Actually, it's celebrating Loving versus Virginia in 1967, okay. part of the Warren uh, Supreme Court okay. that actually banned uh, making uh, interracial marriages illegal. Oh, so it, would you have known that? No, I wouldn't. Uh, that was his and you know, last I, name. And I, and so I that said that was there, his last name. That was his last name. It was be, Mildred and Richard. Mildred and Richard Loving. What? Way to be. Kurt they had gotten married out of the state. They moved back to Virginia, and yeah. then they're like, they, then they were told that basically they had to leave because they were I'm they were against the RJ. law. They were illegal. Current event appropriate. Uh, so you know, I thought like, you know, it's a great story. If you want to go to nationalcolor.com, awesome. and I think myself, this ought to be a great story. You know what? 
I think there's a movie. It was a movie. There was a movie. In uh, 2016, there was yeah. a movie, and actually, uh, I watched it. Uh, best actor, Gold, uh, Golden Globe. I'll think of the actor in a minute. Is um, uh, Ed Harris in there? Uh, no. I'm not sure about it, Harrison. Kevin Bacon? So I'm going to actually go check that out and see. I think Netflix <laughs> might actually of, have it. One degree of seven for Kevin Bacon? Uh, or Kevin at least they did. Pull our comments back up? That, does not, that says go fluking, just so you know. Okay. I, I know RJ flinched when he saw it. It's fluking. <laughs> fluking. Catching a fluke. Flounder. All right. Well, another food. That Peanut Jimmy butter hey, cookie that is my day. Hey, up in New Jersey. Hey, buddy, how are you? I need yeah. some ziti. That is a national holiday. Yeah. Peanut butter cookie day? Peanut butter cookie day. Today? That was interesting, though, that even though we know peanut butter, you know, uh, Grover Washington. Can I take a live call on the show? <laughs> uh, came up with peanut butter. Show. It wasn't until 1916 that peanut butter actually became about. But nobody understands where the fork. Okay, you got it. Individual separations. I right was now. reminded. Today on this day in history is also uh, Ben Hannigan's retirement. He's a 22-year combat controller and out of Herbert Field. Okay. So that's what my boy Ryan National was, uh, Ben well, it's not a national holiday yet, but uh, he wanted okay. me to put that plug It's an in. Emerald Coast holiday. Yeah, it's now an Emerald uh, Coast it's, holiday. It's a Homer uh, Field holiday. Well, we're going to have a little uh, gathering at uh, AJ's on the Bayou and uh, 3 o'clock today if you want to come celebrate and get to know some of these uh, great American heroes. Uh, and I would consider some of my favorite entertaining people the combat control community. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's his 22, 22 years today retired. So anyway, awesome. there, there's yeah. a, did I get that right, Ryan? You know, that's why you text this information in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Instead of calling it. me on the show. Oh, National Red Rose Day. So National if you, if you didn't need an Day. excuse to go ahead and get somebody you that care follows about. follows National Loving Call Day your local forest. Cookies, and I'm sure. That's beautiful. Or even go to Publix. I don't know. You can get a Red Rose almost anywhere National, these days. See, that's just done by FTD or somebody like that that's just marketing flowers. But it, I'm, all, I'm down for Red Rose Day. I'm okay with that. But peanut butter cookie day is winter. Okay. Peanut butter cookie and, meat, and, we, and jerky. And jerky. That's a meal. That's a meal. Jerky and <laughs> peanut butter cookies. I'm good. Okay. Best done? place for jerky? Bucky's. Okay. Fair. Have you been oh, to Bucky's? Okay, on the interstate. Yeah, on the, there uh, right there, at the, right before the I'll Florida, the on the Alabama right. they side. Have the they have they have the jerky they're, they're, buffet. They make, uh, oh, they make they every the type buffet. of jerky over there. Yes. So if you're ever traveling westbound on I-10, be I'm sure ready to, to buy check my pizza out oven. I might Bucky's have to now there. Drive and it's go the get Walmart of travel stores. It, it, it is huge. That being said, that being said, I think we've got a show. Have a great weekend. See you out at Crab Island, and um, stay rational, my friends. Have a great weekend. Thanks. Thank you.